so in this session uh, we will be discussing about a few uh, basic details on battery management system so the agenda of the presentation is something like this i will walk you through the introduction of battery management system what is the market need for a battery management system and i will start off with the current trends in battery management system considering the platform approach how the different oems are taking platform approach uh, for uh, electric pressure battery management system design uh, i will also take you through what are the leading oems in battery management systems and uh, what are the different kinds of solutions they have to offer for customers then let us uh, get into uh, brief details of uh, battery management system functions what does a bms do why do we need a bms and coming to the job uh, perspective from job perspective what kind of roles are available in the industry at the entry level senior level and top management this will be followed by a brief case study uh, to give an overview to the participants on what actually happens in the industry uh, when you say it's a hardware development for battery management system what exactly the team does what exactly are the typical activities carried out by software engineering and system engineering department so and last but not the least i will also give you an overview of a kind of skill sets that one needs to possess in order to get into the different streams possible in battery management for example hardware software system engineering electrochemical specializations etc so uh, now uh, coming to the necessity of battery management system uh, before going to the need of bms as such let us just dwell upon why we require an electric vehicle over uh, ic engines uh, just at a grassroots level uh, to answer this is that the efficiency of an electric vehicle is much higher at urban drive cycle in the sense at lower speeds or low to mid speeds as compared to an ic engine so if you see the conversion efficiency from well to wheel that means from the point you take off petroleum or you process petroleum up to the point where you drive it the, the efficiency of a typical uh, conventional powertrain is quite low somewhere in the range of 30% whereas if you see the overall efficiency of an electric vehicle ecosystem considering the grid and the vehicle is somewhere close to 70% so that somewhat a, a huge leap in terms of efficiency comparing the two powertrains so the next best uh, answer that one could think of is the number of moving parts in an electric vehicle as against a conventional power uh, which means an electric vehicle is almost always uh, driven by uh, high reliability electronics and software almost always driven by high electronics reliability electronics hardware uh, coupled with software embedded systems so uh, this is as against a conventional powertrain where you have 70% of moving parts which means there are 70% of the parts which are prone to failure or uh, for example prone to uh, wear, wear out mechanisms as against an electric vehicle which has only 20 to 30% of moving parts so this also answers the total cost of ownership if you are using electric vehicle in fleet applications suppose you want to rent out an electric vehicle or operate something like a cab uh, services like ola or uber or for example bounce so this kind of uh, an electric vehicle or electric mobility shared ecosystem will have much uh, better total cost of ownership and return on investment as against the conventional property so coming to the technical details why we need a battery management system most electric vehicles today around the world are based out of lithium ion batteries the simple reason being the energy density of lithium ion batteries are much much higher as compared to a lead acid battery close to 50 to 60 percent more as against the lead acid battery having said that this also translates into a smaller footprint for a lithium ion battery as against a lead acid battery so if you want to get the same power output from a lithium ion battery compared to a lead acid battery then the weight of the battery as well as the volume occupied by the battery is slashed by almost 40 to 50 percent as against a lead acid battery so what does this mean to a car maker means more range for the same volume and weight of the batteries that's point number one uh, second thing is the, the batteries are compact in form factor and lightweight which means better vehicle handling and vehicle dynamics so the, the batteries can be placed lower so vehicle can be much better as against a lead acid battery uh, this is as against a conventional battery that we've been using for years so uh, but what is the down down size of having a lithium ion battery management system the downside of having the lithium ion battery management system is that the lithium ion batteries by themselves are very sensitive to a lot of environmental factors as well as uh, electrical and mechanical factors for example lithium ion batteries have to be operated in a safe operating temperature window which means it can be discharged only at 
between a certain range of temperatures for instance charging the discharging is allowed only between uh, minus 10 to plus 60 degree centigrade and charging can be done only at positive temperatures so if not uh, the the bms if if the bms does not take care of such things then uh, the cell by themselves depending on the chemistry can be hazardous the lithium ion cells can explode because there can be internal uh, chemical reactions which are highly exothermic in nature and also it is uh, since all the uh, cells are closely packed it will be a cascade reaction so once there is a fire or thermal event inside a battery pack it's very difficult to contain without without proper measures the only way that a thermal management system uh, lithium ion battery management system can avoid such a catastrophic failure is to ensure a reliable hardware and software as well as a, a robust battery uh, packaging mechanism so this is in short need for a bms that is uh, something to do with the temperature also there are other reactions with respect to the cell which happen because of overcharging or uh, over discharging or over voltage so these are all some of the electrical uh, aspects of uh, the cell which can lead to a hazardous event within the cell so if you charge the battery at a very high current or if you take too much of current out of the battery or if you charge the battery at a higher voltage than what the chemistry can support these these are the situations which can lead to hazard the hazard is to such a level that the whole vehicle can go up in flames and put the occupants at risk so this this makes battery management systems a must for all lithium ion uh, based chemistries which are very very sensitive to thermal runaway the second most important need i can say is all lithium ion cells are not made same so which means there are some variations while charging and discharging the cells for which the B battery management system plays an important role in ensuring that uh, all the cells operate at the same efficiency while the vehicle is running so there are special functions called self balancing functions which ensure that the the cell uh, the cells connected in series and parallel behave the same way when they are in the vehicle this is in a nutshell about why the uh, battery management system is such an important and integral part of an electric vehicle so as we were talking about uh, the battery management system need let us also understand what typically a battery management system does battery management system typically uh, does the job of measuring cell voltages uh, it is required uh, we, we shall see why cell voltages are required in, in the coming slides it also measures the stat, state of charge the state of charge is nothing but the amount of battery uh, or the amount of energy left in the battery at any given point of time as compared to the initial charge of the battery the soc of the state of charge also depends on the cell voltages the current flowing through the battery pack and the temperature of various hot spots inside the battery pack these three are the inputs which go into determining the state of charge of the battery hence the most important functions for a battery management system are mode measurement of voltage pack current and temperature apart from this the battery management system also encompasses lot of safety features to ensure that the safe operating limits of lithium ion cells inside the back pack are never breached so the battery pack hardware conditions are also monitored by the bms which means that the the bms also takes care of certain uh, functions related to shock certain uh, functions related to crash in case of a vehicle accident the battery module can be subjected to a lot of impact so the bms shall ensure that uh, there are some physical connections which will be permanently disconnected from the battery in the event of crash so that the occupants inside do not get electrocuted uh, apart from that the bms also has a lot of protection functions which will ensure that either due to malfunction in the charger or due to any other system malfunction the lithium ion batteries are not allowed to overcharge or experience a higher temperature or if in case there is a failure in the cell due to uh, due to premature chemical reactions occurring inside the cell the bms ensures that a particular defective cell will be isolated from the rest of the plant to ensure that there will not be any thermal event leading to a hazardous event at the vehicle level so these are some of the main functions of the battery management system nowadays the the need of battery management system is just beyond protection of cells when we talk of uh, the role of bms 
cell safety of course is uh, the primary function preventing the cells from experiencing over voltage under voltage over current short current short circuit current and high temperature exposure it also ensures system safety at the vehicle level for example the bms may be uh, interested with the task of opening the contactors or main relays which can connect the battery pack to the load it may be interested with the task of managing the uh, temperature distribution inside the battery using liquid cooling system or in some ad advanced connected vehicles the bms also plays a role of uh, authenticating the battery with respect to the vehicle so is this especially true if the battery is swappable so every time a user swaps a battery with another battery the vehicle has to understand whether the connected battery is what is intended for the vehicle or is someone trying to connect a spurious battery or a battery which is not compatible to the vehicle these are all the things which are coming up uh, because of advances in uh, internet of things and connected cars battery performance is also one of the key uh, functions of bms uh, when we, we talked about state of charge there is something called as state of health state of power and state of energy which gives how good the existing battery is as compared to a new battery and it also tells the user when to replace a battery so this is uh, again possible thanks to data analytics and the uh, internet of things uh, which are a lot of uh, where there are a lot of developments happening around and people are talking about analyzing battery data to predict battery performance and improvising the battery life through customization of algorithms so diagnostics and prognostics uh, this is something uh, which is a very important part of battery management system especially very very useful for fleet applications where the fleet operators are looking at uh, not only diagnostics diagnostics is a, is a set of terminology used to analyze failure so the failure has already happened and one is trying to analyze the root cause of the failure uh, but the important and most interesting development in this area is prognostics prognostics is how well you can predict a failure or a degradation even before it actually happens and thereby uh help uh, a user or a fleet operator to plan maintenance operations in advance which will ensure that there is zero downtime for the fleet operator because zero downtime means a higher uh, roi and uh, a higher for example uh, a better to total cost of ownership because total cost of ownership is just not about the vehicle it's about the whole operation when you are a fleet operator connectivity is also a very increasing trend in electric vehicles this is also because of having uh, telematics on the vehicle cloud computing and uh, a lot of data being available for very very low cost which makes dumping data from the vehicle to the cloud very attractive and analyzing the data for optimizing the vehicle parameters so if you see the current trends in the electric vehicle bms many of the oems uh, globally are adopting a platform approach first reason to do this is to cut costs uh, to have same similar components across different vehicles so that as you go up the volume chain your prices come down so in this regard uh, different types of battery management systems are available for different applications small applications we we'll talk about different types of uh, bmss used in electric vehicles one is called as a standalone battery protection circuit the other is called as an advanced protection circuit there is something called as a centralized battery management system uh, a modular battery management system and a wireless battery management system so to start with a standalone or uh, an advanced battery protection circuit is a very simple very trivial battery management system uh, which comes with just the basic functions what a bms has to do cell voltage measurement measurement of current and the measurement of pack temperature it will not have any provision to display the soc or or the amount of juice left in the battery it just does the function of protecting the uh, lithium ion battery pack in the vehicle so when it comes to features like cell balancing there will be no cell balancing or there will be very primitive type of cell balancing where it just switches on wherever it whenever it's required and switches off whenever it's not required so the second important function is there will be no communication it's a stand alone electronics which just cuts the pack in case of any hazardous event the good thing about such a battery management system it's low cost so these are typically found on uh, very low cost products like power tools or if you see uh, electric bicycles and uh, very small robotic vacuum cleaners or if you see small electronics like uh, a power bank for example 
uses these kind of uh, standalone chips without any diagnostics. So these are very ideal for RC toys, cardless power tools, laptop batteries, and very, uh, very lightweight portable applications where lesser number of cells are there in series and parallel. And the second concept or the second type of architecture which is usually used in a BMS is called as a centralized battery management system. A typical centralized battery management system is looks something like what you see on the right hand side. It consists of a microcontroller and a cell voltage or a, a set of ASICs which monitor different cell voltages, temperatures and currents and reports it to the, mic, the main microcontroller. The basic disadvantage of a centralized BMS is that uh, it has a single PCB and it is not scalable. So if you want to make vehicles starting from a 48 volt system up to uh, let's say a 1000 volt system, then having just a single PCB is not scalable. You have to have different designs for different vehicles, which will in turn up your costs and you will lose the cost advantage. Also, since there is a single PCB and a large battery pack, the wiring is quite difficult and uh, because the module and pack functions are clubbed in a single PCB, you don't get the kind of modularity and scalability that you require when you want to tweak some software algorithms to address a particular or a specific module in question. But having said that, if it all depends on the kind of vehicle strategy that the OEM wants to attack or develop in order to penetrate a particular market. If OEM is lo just looking at low cost vehicles, uh, which, which will be a small form factor than uh, centralized BMS is something which is attractive because it's cheaper and smaller uh, and you can have the same thing for all for all small this is on, only attractive for electric vehicles which have a single battery compartment for example Nissan Leaf has a single battery compartment or a Kia Soul EV has a single battery compartment so having a centralized BMS makes much more sense as compared to a scalable BMS that we are going to see in the next slide. Also, I would like to mention that these kind of BMSs are or were previously mostly used in car platforms which were originally designed for IC engines but were later taken up for conversion to EV platform where because of packaging constraints etc the OEMs were forced to go for a centralized battery management system. Now having said that now uh, the centralized battery management system is now giving way for something called as a modular battery management system which is a uh, plug and play master slave configuration. Uh, there will be a single master and multiple slaves which will be connected in G daisy chain. So when we say daisy chain, daisy chain is just like something like you can think of as a relay race kind of a situation where uh, each slave passes on the information to the next uh, slave which is below the chain. And finally the slave which is at the bottom most part of the chain transmits the inf information to the master. So have, by having such a configuration, it's very easy to just plug and play the modules based on the battery configuration that the vehicle has. So in turn translates to easy maintenance. For example, a particular module in, in a, an electric vehicle is found faulty uh, for a battery management system hardware can only address particular hardware related to that module. So I can just remove the PCB associated with that module and replace with a new module. And all I need to do is just uh, plug in uh, two or three uh, uh, connectors which are associated with the cell voltages, communication and the current. It's very easy uh, to expand or to downsize the system just by changing the wiring harness design, but not changing anything with respect to the BMS PCB, which is very, very costly and time consuming. So the main uh, unique selling point of this architecture is reuse. Reuse and simple wiring. Simple wiring because all the BMS electronics associated with a particular module will sit right on top of the module. So the wire lengths will be reduced. The number of wires running around between different modules is quite low and it's easy to maintain. Hence, this is very ideal for medium and large scale electric vehicles where there can be multiple battery compartments because you will have hundreds of cells which are lined up in series. So it is not possible to package hundreds of cells in a single box. Uh, that box will be the battery compartments will be distributed all throughout the vehicle chassis. So this will make uh, these kind of modular systems will make connections much easier at a vehicle level as compared to a centralized battery management system. So having this common platform across all the vehicle segments also translates to lower cost because you are doing a part sharing uh, among different uh, vehicle variants and among different vehicle categories in the 
product portfolio of the company so it does keep the cost much much lower as compared to a centralized battery management system so uh, finally the cost uh, whether to take up a modular battery management system or a centralized battery management system is is again uh, highly dependent on the market strategy for the company what it intends to sell in a particular region and what its strengths are uh, for example if, if a, a car maker is well known to make good and efficient small cars then a centralized battery management system could make more sense to that company as compared to a distributed battery management system so coming to the leading tier ones and oems which are available in the bms space uh, just to quote tier ones uh, you have mark called lithium lithium balance at the global level uh, in india we have a top three uh, battery pack manufacturing as well as lithium and battery management system design houses for example exicom sun mobility and dyn energy these are purely indian uh, uh, and coming to the oems at the global level uh, i'm sure many of them would have known tesla nissan uh, bms uh, uh, bmss which are deployed in tesla and nissan having been designed uh, by their own subsidiaries uh, hyundai uh, of course with its uh, design or mobis uh, indian oems for instance ether energy mahindra and mahindra mahindra electric being the uh, design arm of mahindra and mahindra for electric vehicles so uh, a lot of uh, other oems also venturing into the electric vehicle space like tvs and bajaj try to come up with the three wheelers and uh, electric two wheelers for personal as well as fleet mobility operations. Uh, 